So next up, I'd like you to welcome David Messner and um, Kim Hughes, and we're going to talk about using a creative educational resource for families. Thank you. Um, Kim Hughes is in the audience. Um, we have a table out here, so you can talk to Kim later. I'll be presenting today. Uh, my name is David Meisner. I'm the director of your ALS guide. And today, I'm going to introduce you to our website and then um, talk about our upcoming home and daily living guide. And then throughout that, we'll talk about different kind of tips and principles for content development. All right, so this story started when my aunt, who was a fourth grade teacher, was diagnosed with ALS in 2013. Um, she was in Arizona, I was in Colorado. And she, um, her symptoms progressed quickly. We were a well-organized family, mostly local. We did everything we could, and we felt like we were always scrambling to catch up, felt like we were playing a game of telephone, trying to piece everything together. We had amazing care from the ALS Association Arizona chapter, and at the same time, we were still trying to figure out, and she was trying to figure out what the next things to do were. So she passed away two years later in 2015. And um, after she passed away, my dad, her brother, started talking to, we started talking about, could we create a resource for other families facing similar challenges so that people don't have to reinvent the wheel? So we started talking. My, my background was, um, is in education. I have a master's degree in education. I've taught in a classroom for seven years. I worked at a PBS television station in DC with the learning media department. I've written books, um, articles, web content. Um, so my background was in that. I was just leaving the classroom. And to the bottom left is Kim Hughes, who um, from 2002, 2004 to 2016, she was the director of care services for the ALS Association Arizona chapter. Kim is amazing. She had worked with, I think, thousands of families. She managed the loan closet, went to DC to advocate every year. Um, was a part of four clinic teams in the Phoenix area, and she took care of my aunt. My aunt loved Kim. Uh, I had never met Kim until after my aunt passed away, and she fit her for a power wheelchair, et cetera. A lot of you in the room I know know Kim. She's reappearing. Um, <laughs> Kim left the association in 2016. Uh, we got together. We spent about a year really mapping out what the site would look like, starting with sticky notes. We had many ideas, and we ended up boiling it down to we're an educational resource practical, how to qual improving quality of life for families affected by ALS. And we also saw your ALS guide as a website that could be used by ALS professionals as well. So we, we designed the site. We tried to make it as user-friendly as possible, very practical. Um, as you can see, our audience are primarily people living with ALS and caregivers. And again, professionals uh, throughout the country, throughout the world, give our URL or our pamphlets to their newly diagnosed patients or other people living with ALS to um, try to guide them along the way. So one of the reasons we see this type of resource, including my the ALS decision tool, um, is important is because not everybody obviously goes to a multidisciplinary clinic. Um, oftentimes, you're going to have three months between visits. Even if some of your questions are answered, there are still things that change and things that families need. So we wanted to institutionalize this knowledge that we had learned as a family, learned from other families, learned from Kim and other professionals, and try to put it into one place that's easy to use. Um, our, we launched in 2017. Our site traffic has continued to double every year. So we've continued to be encouraged and, and grow our site and uh, continue. Um, one of the things we do on our site is we absolutely link to a lot of other organizations. So we want to connect people to the best resources that are out there. Um, so that's one of our real things that we do. There are no advertisements, no pop-ups, no anything like that. We just want people, people need information and they need to find it in one place. It needs to be easy and then we try to send them out to all the other great resources out there including everything that you all do. Um, so this, this topic is using and creating educational resources. So they're obviously um, resources that you already use um, and then you may be wanting to create something yourself. So maybe you're a PT and you want to have a PDF handout, just a quick handout that you can give to families. It might be a more involved website or interactive tool. So we're going to kind of talk about some of these content considerations. Um, the first thing is obviously just the need, right? What is the objective? What need are you hoping to fill with the um, piece of content that you're looking to develop? It's obviously important to think about your audience and decide 
um, who your primary audience is, maybe you have a secondary audience, and really focus and, and keep them in mind throughout the development process. Um, in education, depth versus breadth is a very common discussion when developing curricula, and so uh, you know, depth, you can dive deep into one topic, uh, breadth, you do a little bit about a lot of topics, so you need to kind of decide what, it, what is that gonna look like for you in this initial stage. Uh, format, very important, is it a handout, is it a print booklet, is it um, email series, is it a video, is it website tool like the decision tool. Um, design, one of the things we decided early on is that we wanted our design to be very simple and minimalist and we wanted um, people to, to find what they were looking for on our site. So we decided to have very basic design and not have some fancy graphic or web design get in the way of the user experience. Um, in terms of writing level, uh, we really wanted to make this accessible to the average person. Uh, I became kind of the translator because I just didn't know the ALS world the way Kim does, for example. So we really talked about it, and we don't use PALS, we don't use CALS. If we use an acronym, we reference it. We just want it to be, if somebody just drops into a page, average person, just diagnosed with ALS, we don't want them to feel lost in any way. Um, and then collaboration. Um, you know, you need to think about, okay, can we do this in-house or do we want to partner with other experts or organizations? So our site is, is a pretty deep site. Um, when you look at it, it looks pretty simple, but once you click on something like self-care, it'll maybe take you to a landing page with nine other pages on sleep, range of motion, different topics. Um, we have an ALS clinics directory. Uh, it is US based about, I would say 90% of our site is universal. So anyone from any country can access it um, and, and get what they want. But there are references to Medicare and things that are based in the US. And at the same time, we want to build out um, and have a greater appeal to an international audience as well. 84% uh, of our traffic comes from the US and the rest comes from <clears throat> other countries. Um, and, and same with recommended resources here at the bottom. If anyone, if, if anyone wants their organization to be listed, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to add you to our resources page. We have an international section and we'd like to, to grow it. Um, one of the things we do is we have a very in-depth section on equipment. We always try to point people to loan closets, save them money. Uh, we do talk about insurance and what you have to do to get certain pieces of equipment. And then if you do need something that's cash pay, you can't get it a loan closet, we do have links. And we'll be adding a lot more equipment here in the next couple of months. Uh, one of the things that I think really distinguishes your ALS guide is our video content. So we currently have about 200 videos um, throughout the site. Um, they're often two to five minute clips. It may be with a family member, maybe with a person living with ALS, maybe often um, professionals of all sorts. Um, and those are sprinkled throughout the site and we're gonna have another 100 videos coming. So early next year, we'll have about 300 videos on our site as well as on our YouTube channel. And we really try to, we have the text as the core part of the site and then the videos are really complimentary as you're coming across certain topics. And then, so that, that was kind of the breadth, and then we decided we needed to do some deep dives into different topics, and so we, uh, the first guide we developed was a power wheelchair guide, and um, really tried to go in and have multiple pages so that people could find enough of the answers of what they needed, and then connect with the professionals from there. Um, a respiratory guide is probably our most uh, visited uh, content on the site. Um, there's a lot more than you can see here. Uh, we worked with a respiratory therapist and a nurse who had worked at ALS clinics and uh, filmed them and they helped us vet the content. Um, braces guide, this is a smaller guide, but it's very practical. We have a lot of demos on this. Um, if you go on the site, you can see Kim doing some of the demos along with an orthotist from Hanger Clinic um, who's worked with AL, um, ALS patients for over 30 years. So we really tried to find top experts to work with us. For our newly diagnosed guide, um, this has been a really popular guide, and this we worked with the Duke ALS Clinic. So we interviewed Dr. Bedlack and Stacy, the social worker who's been at his clinic for, I believe, over 15 years, and they were fantastic. And we really tried to design this guide so that people could get the information they wanted. Um, so if you wanna learn about the diagnosis, you can just do this. You can look at next steps. If you wanna plan ahead, you can look at it. If you're not ready for it, you can always return back to that later. And we're excited to be um, creating right now a home and daily living guide. And this is a guide that is gonna be our most in-depth guide to date. And we also think it's gonna be our most practical how-to guide. Uh, so we have 
we, we were working on this idea, and then a family in the Denver area, so pretty close to me, um, reached out to us, and they had been talking to some different organizations, wanted to partner. They have long-term care insurance, so they have professional caregivers coming into their home uh, 12 hours a day, and they were really frustrated by the lack of training and preparation for them, as well as uh, retention. People were just leaving. They didn't know what to do. They felt overwhelmed. So they wanted to create a, care gui a, a guide for professional caregivers. We stopped and realized what we were doing was essentially a caregiver guide. So we merged our visions. We're going to have a one page that really is an entry point for caregivers, as well as another page for agencies, to try to see if we can't train them. We're going to be really pushing that for the first half of next year to raise the level of care that people will receive when someone comes into the home. So this is coming in early 2023. Um, a lot of the topics are about activities of daily living. Um, so once again, we're rubber meets the road, transferring, toileting, bathing, grooming, dressing. Um, we worked with Mary at ALS Hope Foundation, and she really talked to us about how mental health is often left out of uh, a lot of these types of materials. And, and we agree, and we've worked on it, but no, we could have, knew we could add more, so we interviewed her, have a great video interview with her that'll be coming soon as well. Um, that's part of the guide, and then it's gonna include some things like smart home automation, and, and again, resources and support linking out to other places. Uh, we had the good fortune of connecting with ALS Hope Foundation this year. Um, Jamie and I connected, we were talking to Sarah, and one thing led to another, and we decided to partner with Joel and the Hope Foundation on this guide. So Kim and I flew out to Philadelphia in late August, and we had two days of amazing filming with everyone there. And uh, Sarah was one of the stars of the show. Um, so we have, we have some fantastic equipment demos, um, everything from toileting devices to mobility to um, walking aids, all kinds of things. If we have upper and lower um, body range of motion, and then we also have a, um, a we have a 10 minute video on Hoyer lift, um, and just really kind of walking people through it. So we're, we're trying to really have a very easy, accessible site, have a lot of things in one place that people can learn. We don't go into so much information that it's overwhelming, or at least we hope we don't. And then we try to get people, knowledge is power, as somebody said earlier, try to get people to know what they need to know and then send them off to you all to get that individualized support. Um, everyone has their own process, and I know that a lot of you have your own process. Um, I appreciated this image here for the, you know, everybody gets a lot of feedback and one of the things you need to do is really decide what you're gonna incorporate um, and, and what it's gonna look like. So we often start out, I mean, defining the need, talking to people, then once we feel like we know what is needed, we'll envision what that's gonna look like, it often changes. Uh, then we do research, online research, we talk to people, and one of the most helpful things we've found is just talking to people, an informal interview. So one of the things I've done is I'll just interview an expert, just talk to them for an hour on Zoom and take notes. I'll interview Kim, she doesn't, she knows so much and she doesn't know what she knows. Uh, when she was leaving the association, people told her she should write a book. So we, we start out this site trying to just kind of take her brain and institutionalize that knowledge that from all the things she's seen and, and put it out there. So we do a lot of just kind of informational interviews to kind of gather all that information initially, um, get input from different people. Um, we do our outline, then we film, and after we film, we go back, we have the transcript, and that often really informs what we're gonna be doing. Um, in terms of the writing, we write, edit, get the feedback, final proof, get it out the door. So we try to streamline it as possible, and at the same time, we really wanna make sure that we're doing it in the right way. Um, Right before I get to questions, I just wanted to um, say I think it's it's wonderful. All of us, I think, out here have educational resources of one type or another, and I think it, they really do play an important role in improving quality of life um, for families. So um, we do have a, a booth over here, so if anyone wants to come over and talk, we're happy to discuss any thoughts or challenges or projects you may have, um, just get to know you. Um, if you want your organization to be linked on our site, come on over or send us an email or connect with us virtually. More than happy to talk. Um, and I do have a handout. It's, it's a two-pager. It's just content development um, considerations, just kind of some things to think about as you're developing um, some content. And then we just have these channels. We have a newsletter that we send out twice a month, Facebook page, um, YouTube. I think we got into Twitter a little late. We'll see if it's around in six months. But we, we got onto Twitter in October, and um, we'll go from there. But I'm happy to take anybody's questions, and you're welcome to reach out and email Kim or myself. Kim is right here in the red. That's good.
So David, thank you for the, the dedication and thought that's gone into this project. is phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. I just have a very quick question. Sure. Is it kind of accessible to people out of America? Yes. Yes. You can definitely find it anywhere in the world. I mean, like I said, we have the traffic. I have the, yeah, 84% US, Canada, UK, India, Australia are the next ones. Obviously, it's in English. One day, we would love to feel like we've completed the content in our site and then put it in some other languages. It's definitely accessible, but right now it is only in English. Brilliant, thank you so much. Are there any questions? Right here. Right at the back there. Hi, I'm, I'm Debbie Ways. I'm from San Diego, actually. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say, I stumbled on your site about three months ago and I've just been passing it off to patients mm. <laughs> right and left. I think it's the most wonderful site. It's so easy, so, like as you said, accessible. But um, I just want, I had an idea as you were talking about some of the things you were doing. And I wondered if you considered maybe doing one page for hospitals as well. Um, that thing that made me think of that is we have a patient in the hospital right now who's very progressed and a lot of the nurses don't seem to know what to do. Um, so I'm, con I'm just putting it out there as a possibility of an extra page. Sure, it's a good idea. No, we're, we, we started, we always have more ideas than we do time and resources, so, um, but absolutely, let's come, let's come on up and we'll talk. Um, but a very good idea, yes. We don't, we don't have that currently. We do have the clinics directory, so we update that a few times a year. Um, I do feel like it's one of the most comprehensive clinic directories out there. It has independent clinics, ALS Association, MDA, VA, um, and we update that and clinics contact us and then we have flyers that we'll mail out for free and so a lot of clinics put our um, flyers into their new patient packets, especially our newly diagnosed flyer. Oh, you do, okay, great. Thank you. One more. Oh, here. I have checked this guide before and it's great. My question is, are people living with a LS? M and D part of the team to keep updating this guide? Yes, so we, um, that is an area where we can continue to improve, but absolutely we do work with different families who are impacted by the disease. Right now on the um, current site, or for the Home and Daily Living Guide that we're working on with the ALS Hope Foundation, um, Joel and his wife are working with us. Uh, there's Matt, uh, Matt's Place, which is a foundation for a, a US military veteran who's living with ALS and his wife, and then some other um, pals and cows. We work with IMALS and get input from them. And it's something we can continue to do more of as we um, continue to refine our site. So yes, we do, get, we do really try to get input from the people actually living with the disease, and then someone like Kim who has seen 1,000 families. We have what? Time for one more question in the, in the middle there. I swear I won't ask more questions today. Um, <laughs> Marcella from the ALS Association uh -huh. in Colombia. Um, I'm just wondering, I know you said something about um, where people could loan uh, devices or medical devices or wheelchairs, whatever. Have you thought about a space where people can't, I don't know, I, it happens a lot in Colombia that the patient dies and their family has wheelchairs, communication devices, a bed, like they can donate that to someone else, but a clinic won't take it because it's already used. But is, is that a possibility you've been thought about in the webpage that people can say, hey, I have this to give, and then someone can say, hey, I'll, I'll take it, give it to me. It is a great idea. It's one of the many ideas we've had that we didn't have time for now. Um, Kim actually worked in um, durable medical equipment for four years, and that's how she kind of um, went into ALS. And she's talked to us about how difficult that would be and challenging, but it's a great idea and it's, it's still on the, on the brain, on the list. But happy to talk more about how that might work. Because it's true, I mean, those are resources that are out there floating around, right? And we do have people, so Kim fields questions just like she did in person with lots of people, and Kim will redirect people and so we'll contact an ALS association in a different city and really try to connect them so that they can get that to the loan closet. Um, and try to connect people as best we can, but f currently we don't have that feature. Mm -hmm. Great, thank okay. you. Thank you very much to David and Kim. Okay, thank, thank you. you.